Let's build a social network app with Canvas and Bubble in just a few minutes. Now, a quick disclaimer, this video does assume that you have a little bit of background knowledge in Bubble. If that's not you, don't worry. We do have a free no-code bootcamp, which I'll link to in the description below, which is designed to teach you the fundamentals of Bubble and also a little bit of Canvas. Now, I've already gone ahead and created a new app from the Canvas base template, so you should do that too to get started. When you've done that, the first thing that you wanna do is run the app as the admin user. That'll take you to the launch checklist in the admin page. So I've already done some of the stuff in the launch checklist, right? You're gonna add your app identifiers, register the app. This is pretty straightforward stuff that you can follow yourself. I'm gonna jump right up to adding the app name. So what we're building here is a social network for players, tennis players rather, to find other players to play with in their local area. We're gonna keep it specific to where I'm actually based at the moment, which is Auckland, New Zealand. So Tennis Buddy is the name of our app. So that's gonna then appear throughout our site. And we can also add our app logo. So I've already pre-created some logos. We can add a dark logo, a light logo, and also just the icons. All right, you can see that's already updated there in our admin portal. All right, and then let's come down to updating our marketing pages. So we're actually going to just edit our existing index page, which is our landing page. Okay, there's a few different things that we can configure to change the overall layout. And then there's all of these blocks. That's how the page builder works is that there's blocks of content that you can edit. You can move them up and down. You can edit them. You can delete them. You can add new blocks, right? So just as a quick demo, let's just edit this block up the top. I'm going to click the edit icon, all right? That might be what we choose. And of course we can update some links here, we can update the image here. We can even set this to go to an internal page in our app. So maybe we send this to be an about page that we send to another internal marketing page, which is our about page, open a new tab. And then this one we could say like find a player, right? And send that to an internal page, which we don't actually have yet. We wanna actually create a find page. That's the next step in this process, but we don't have that configured right now. So we'll just have that set to go to the login page. And we will actually add an image here as well. And here's what our new block looks like. And then when we're ready, we can publish it. You can even preview the page here, just have a quick look at what it actually looks like within your live site. All right, and that's what it looks like. We can click about, go to the about page, which of course is just another marketing page that we haven't configured. You get the idea. Right, what else have we got in our launch checklist? We've got to install the Canvas extension, which I've already done, so we can skip that step update our navigation. So just like marketing pages, you configure your headers and footers through the admin portal. And you can choose of these three default headers, which one that you want to edit. You can update the content within it. I'll put a link in the description below to a video that's just about how to configure the header. Also from the admin portal, you configure your login page. So this is what it looks like at the moment. And we can configure you know, the visual look of this login page within the admin portal. So maybe we'll wanna add our nice tennis image again, right? Add our tagline and description. We can even change the color here. That's gonna update our login page branding, if you will. So the advantage of doing all of this through the admin portal in Canvas, as opposed to having to do it in Bubble, is one, a lot of this stuff doesn't need to be super customizable, right? Like the login page, Canvas has already created like a beautiful login page template for you. And of course you can go off and create your own login page, but if you're using Canvas, then you want a lot of the functionality to be there out of the box, to just have a few levers to pull to get things moving that much faster. The other advantage is that you don't have to deploy these changes to live in order to see them reflected in your app. You make the changes in the admin portal and they're immediately reflected in your live application. You've also got some SEO stuff that you can do here, but now let's jump into the meat here. Let's create a page with Canvas. So I'm gonna head over to my bubble editor. I'm making sure that I'm on the design tab and then I'm gonna open up 
my canvas extension and add a new page. So I want to add this standard page here. The standard page is just like a nice generic container where we can then add blocks or modules of content. So this is going to be like our fine page where you can find other tennis players to play with. So I'm going to click to create that new page. Then we have to wait a little while. And what's happening here in the background is canvas is essentially hijacking the bubble editor and is creating any design elements, workflows, data types that it needs in order for this standard page to be generated. Right, and then what we're left with is a few elements here that we can configure. One of these, which is really important to note, is this blocks container here. Okay, any extra blocks or elements that we're going to generate using the canvas extension are going to be placed within this container here. So let's jump on and do that immediately. We want to have a repeating group here where we can show like a list of all of the tennis players that are near to us with their contact information and that kind of thing. So I want to add a block to the page. And I'm going to come over to this category. I want the list tile repeating group. And what I'm looking for is the standard repeating group with image. Now, one thing to quickly note is with any of these blocks, you can see a preview of it. And you can also click to open up the documentation to figure out how to configure it. So we're going to add this block. And again, now Canvas is hijacking the bubble editor and is pasting all of the elements that it needs that can constitute this block on our page. All right, let's close this extension, see what we have. All right, we've got a repeating group here. It's already got some information in it. It's actually displaying a list of dummies, which is a data type that exists within Canvas purely for the purpose of populating your repeating groups and other elements with some information just so you, that you can see them working when they arrive on the page. So that's what we've got here. If we preview this page, you can see this is the default functionality that we've got on the page right now. So a few things we want to obviously modify some of this text. We want to change the data source of this repeating group. And we also want to configure this filter logic over here. If I right click reveal an elements tree, this description, you'll see that it exists within a collapsible group. So I'm just going to make sure that I make it invisible on page load. And that's going to mean that it's actually hidden now and collapsed when we preview the page. Same thing for this things to do in Paris text. We don't need that. All right, let's configure this repeating group. So we want it to be set to users. I'm going to clear this. Do a search for all of the users. Let's sort them by their created date. All right, and of course now we're going to get some errors on the page because the children within this repeating group that are referencing the repeating group's data source are expecting dummies, not users. So we now have to go through and reconnect some of these things. Let's make it a circular image for our users as well. All right, and then preview that. All right, so far so good. We've still got a few things that we can edit here. So the activity name, we want that to be our users first and last name. That first last field is what corresponds to that. We don't need this multi drop down of tags. This text here can actually be like an about us kind of field for the user. So we don't have that field or existing right now. So we'll create it an about field. And what I'll do is I'll hold down shift in the down arrow key, move that text down to the bottom. And instead of this posted by, I'll just clear all of that create some room on the left hand side. Let's have this be the user's location, like the area in the city where they are. So I'm going to insert some dynamic data. So we'll have this be the user's location, like the area of the city where they are. So we also need a new field for that. And we want to create that new field. And I think we want to have this actually as an option set. We could have like a geographic address, but since this is all within the same city just to keep things simple. We'll just go by like the regions of the city. So the type of data that I want to use for this is going to be an option set. So I'm just going to create 
a new options set and we'll call this area. And then let's just create some options. So like, for example, in any city, these would probably work. You got like north, west, south, right? You get the idea. And these are like the areas that the user can choose as their location. And now we can set this field. So we'll create a new field on the user make it the area and we'll set that to be of type area. So the parent groups areas display, that's the value that we want to display. And I'll also add an icon here, maybe a little bit big, let's go 23, 23, push it up into the corner and set this to be like a map marker. Bring that across a little bit. Hold down control to select both of these elements, right click, we'll group them. Okay, and now I wanna duplicate this a few times. So I'm gonna hold down control and drag down, move this underneath, and maybe I'll just create a little bit of extra space. And then this time we're gonna add like the user's phone number, right? There's not gonna be any in-app messaging. Users are just gonna see a list with the public contact information for the tennis players that they could contact. So we'll make this the current user's phone number, which is another field that we don't have yet. So I'll make that phone. We could set that to be a number, but so we can account for international phone numbers. You know, we have stuff like plus six four, you have the international country code. That plus icon there won't be able to be entered if it's only a number field. So we'll make it a text field. Okay, that's looking quite cool. I'll move this about section up a little bit. So we can actually see this in action. I'll just create like a few test users. So let's create one here. I'll add some test about text. I'll add example phone number. We'll give them an area. I'll give them my email address. All right, and now let's refresh this page and just see if we've got like this basic functionality working. Oh, we forgot to give them a profile picture. All right, now you can see that that is looking nice. We can obviously fine tune some of the spacing, but I think you get the idea. So really quickly, we've got a repeating group with users formatted just how we want it. Right now we wanna actually have the ability for a user to sign up and add this information. So if I log out here, I'm still logged in as an admin. If I click to sign up, what I have out of the box with Canvas is a sign up step after I add the email where I add my first and last name. So we wanna add some more fields down here to capture information about like the user's phone number, their about us, the information that we were showing on that find page for their profiles. What we wanna do is come over to the reusable sign up login element here. And this is where all of the elements to do with the sign up and login for users lives. So under group sign up, we've got the multiple steps here in different groups. So the first step is where we're collecting the user's email and password. And when the user clicks to go on to the next step, right, then they're shown this group with this first and last name inputs. And all of that, which step is being shown is just being done via custom states behind the scene. So we wanna configure some inputs down here. Now, luckily for us, Canvas already gives us some elements here hidden that we can just expose and then configure to our liking. So we've got this group here, additional fields, right? This is what we wanna expose. So I'm gonna make it visible on page load. And then I'm gonna configure each of these one by one to be the input that we want. So the user's phone number, here we can have the user's area, which we'll configure to attach to our area option set. And then of course, the about information. And this is a search box, which isn't that useful for us for collecting multiple lines of text. So I'm gonna delete that and I'm gonna add in a multi-line input instead. Multi-line input about, and then add some little placeholder. Tell something about yourself. All right now this is a quite a short limited text box for multiple lines of text we want to expand it down here so to do that what i'm going to do is expose this placeholder group here so this is at the moment just collapsing this space between this input and the button below so let's just pull that right down and expose this about group so i have to first drag the height of the container group down and then I can drag the multi-line and put down as well. 
All right, now we've got these extra fields here, which we can add. So all we have to do now is configure the workflow to save this information to the user. So when this continue button is clicked, we're making changes to a user. So there's obviously a few other fields that we need to save here. The phone number is obviously going to be set to input phones value. The area is going to be set to that drop downs value, which we didn't rename. And then the about section, that's going to be set to that multi-line inputs value. Now also what happens after this button is clicked is one of these workflows is gonna trigger based on whether or not you've got email verification set up. That's something that you configure via the admin portal. And if it is set up, then your users are gonna to have to click a email verification link that they'll receive obviously via email in order to get access to your app. So for both of these or for one of them, if you know you're only gonna be using one of them, okay, this is a custom event which when it fires actually sends the user to the index page. And it's from the index page that the user is actually routed to the correct relevant part of the application. So we also need to go to the index page and set up a redirect action, which is going to exist on this workflow here when the page is loaded and the user is not app admin. Okay, if they are the app admin, then they get routed via this workflow to the admin page. But if they're not an admin, then they're just gonna stay on the index page. So we can change this to be whatever page that we want. So we'll set this to be the find page and we don't need the stay parameter. So let's test this out. So we're first going to the index page and then being redirected to the find page. Now you can see there's one thing that we forgot to do and that's update the profile picture, the ability for our users to add a profile picture. So under our group sign up and our sign up step two, there is also right up the top a collapsible group to collect the user's profile picture. So we'll make sure we expose that and we'll also make sure that we are saving that value which is already actually part of the default make changes to a user action. Okay, a couple of things left to round out this very simple application. One is to allow our users to edit the information that they've submitted. And the other is to have some kind of simple filtering on this page. So we'll start first with the ability for our users to edit the information that they've edited. And what Canvas does is expose this my account page by default, which is a place where users can manage their information, their login credentials, that kind of thing. So how it works out of the box is with some sections here on the left hand side, not all of which are relevant for us, but which you can configure to, you know, whatever kind of application setup that you desire. So for us, we only really need the login credentials and the profile. So what I'm gonna do is come over to my account page Okay, we've got group main content and then we've got this group sidebar with some groups within it. So each of these corresponds to some section over here. So we can just simply hide the groups that we don't need. So this notifications tab group we don't need and this payments tab group we don't need. So we're left with just profile and login credentials. And under profile, we can actually add these extra inputs to collect the data that we want our users to be able to edit, like their phone number, et cetera, in the same way that we were doing it for the login page. So under this group in a tabs content here, this is where all of the right hand panel information actually lives. So we've got underneath this first and last name, some hidden groups. We've got like one for the username, we've got one for an about me, and then underneath we've got even more that we could actually drag up and use up here. So in the same way that we were doing it for the login page, we can set these up here in the about page. We have to make sure of course, in this case that we are setting the initial content I'm gonna minimize the size of this placeholder group. This about me group, I'm gonna drag down the page a little bit 
increase the size of the group that this phone number field is living in, duplicate the fields, drag them down the page. So this can be our area and we can set this to be a drop down instead of a text input. So I could just replace this by another type, but make sure that I set the style appropriately. And then as before, set the data source to be our areas. And then of course, we have to configure the workflow when that save changes is clicked and also update the phone number, the area and the about fields. Now make sure that your inputs are visible, okay? Because they're living inside these collapsible groups. So make sure that those collapsible groups themselves are visible. Uh, make sure to add this, add this in as well. Now, coming back to our find page, you'll notice we don't actually have a very convenient way of navigating here. So this header is something that we configure via the admin portal. So I'll make sure to run the app as an admin user again and navigate over to the admin portal and then under header footer. Now remember I do another video just about the header and footer which I'll link to below. But just quickly, we want to update the standard logged in header that's showing for all of our standard type users who are logged in. Okay, and let's add a text here that's gonna take us to an internal bubble page which is gonna be that find page. And while we're at it, we'll also remove these icons, which aren't being used in the current iteration of our app. Although of course you could quite easily imagine a scenario where we wanna have a messages group existing, but in our current scenario, we do not. So if I run the app again now as a normal user, you can see the header has been updated and I can click find a buddy to now go to the find page. Right, the last thing that we wanna do is add some kind of simple filtering to this page. We'll ignore sorting for now and we can delete this new button. So we'll hide the group containing the sort dropdown. I will delete this new button and then the group containing this filter element, I'll just expand that across to take up the space where the button was and then expand the size of it. So how this is working on the page is I can click this filter drop down to open up this group here. Now that group is actually living inside of this filters template reusable element. So if I open it up, okay, you can actually see this is everything that is exposed to us. So we only want one thing in here and that's the ability for our users to be able to filter based on area. So everything apart from this drop down name, we can actually remove. So what I'll do, I'll actually delete this top section and move our drop down to the top. And then everything below, I'm gonna select and group together. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna end up hiding all of these elements. Looks like I missed this guy. Okay, so let's make sure I expand into that dead space up the top. I'm gonna to have it not visible on page load and then I'm gonna collapse it. And now you can see that when we open this filter, we've only got one option here. So let's configure that drop down quickly. Drop down area filter, we can call it. Okay, now we want to get the value of this drop down, which is living inside of a reusable element onto this find page where it can then be used to filter this repeating group of users. Canvas is set up to handle that kind of communication between reusable elements and pages using custom states. So what actually happens when this update button is clicked, okay, is we're setting a state called drop down on the reusable element, right? The reusable element is called filters template. So it has this custom state called drop down, which is going to take a text field. 
and we just have to say, okay, well, let's configure this drop down now to take the right type of data. Because if I go into the filters template and I look at what we have, right, drop down custom state is currently a text type field. So we can actually change that to be an area, okay? And that's gonna mean that we no longer have this error. Now we can delete this keyword custom state being set because we're not using it. Now this means that if we choose an area here from this drop down and click update, okay, and then we look using our debugger at filters template, we'll find that the value of this custom state dropdown is set to whatever we selected. So we can now access that from the page, i.e. we can now point our repeating group to that custom state. So on our find page, I'll open up my repeating group and in my search for users, I'll add a new constraint, which is that the area is equal to filters templates drop down, okay, which is itself an area type value. And we'll also click to ignore empty constraints so that when that filter isn't set, we're seeing the full list of users. All right, let's have a look. We've got one user in the south, one user in the west. So if I go west and update, voila, we're just seeing that single user. We can clear this and we can say, all right, give me the users from the south and that's working as well. All right, there you have it, a social networking site in not much time at all using Bubble and Canvas. Of course, what we've created here is pretty simple, but you can expand on it in many different directions. Canvas obviously gives you a lot of out of the box functionality. You didn't have to worry about responsive settings. You didn't have to worry about a lot of complex sign up logic. You've got a lot of elements set up for you in a way that you can just very easily connect up your unique app logic. If you want to know more about how to use Canvas, then please check out our no code bootcamp, which I'll link in the description below. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. Otherwise, happy bubbling.